Okay, this is chapter 16 on lean operations. Uh, this is a fun chapter, and there, you're gonna learn lots of useful pieces of advice that you can take with you uh, further on in your careers. And it really doesn't matter which department you go and work on or work in uh, going forward. Uh, lean is a concept uh, of continuous process improvement, trying to find creative ways to solve problems, reduce inventory, reduce cycle time, improve quality, reduce variability. These are all things that can be done in, in every aspect of business. So Lean is one of those great chapters that's covered in Supply Chain and Ops, but it can be covered in other courses as well. Like I've mentioned in some of the other chapters, that Lean is a career in itself as well. There are generally a few people within uh, organizations whose only job is to focus on Lean and Six Sigma continuous process improvement. Specifically, um, in my manufacturing days, I worked for an individual who was the VP of Supply Chain and Operational Excellence. And that operational excellence essentially was he had a couple people who were Lean, Six Sigma, Green Belts, Black Belts, Master Black Belts. There's lots of different titles that you can call these people. But all they did was work on um, improving processes, reducing variability, and improving throughput in our manufacturing facility. And it was a full-time job to do that. So um, I have a certification in Lean, Six Sigma, Green Belt. Uh, which means I know enough to be dangerous, but I am not an expert like some of the individuals out there who are black belts and who, who are their primary job is to look at a lot of the statistics involved of improving um, variability, reducing variability, and, uh, and helping to drive seconds out of processes. Uh, because when you take a lot of seconds and you add them up, you can really make some significant improvements to your organization. So this is a fun chapter. It's chapter 16 on lean operations. So what we are going to learn in this chapter is we're going to define just in time, the Toyota production system or TPS and lean operations. We're going to define the seven wastes of lean. We're going to explain the five S concept. We're going to define Kanban and compute the number of Kanban bins or Kanban containers that an organization needs to have. And then we're going to understand the various lean tools and the lean tools are going to be wrapped all throughout this lecture and the other lecture. Frankly, there's a lot of them, um, and so they're just going to be kind of uh, put into uh, various um, parts of this lecture recording. Now, I'm going to break it out into two lecture recordings, uh, but this could have been one really big run-on sentence, one really long video, unlike some of the other chapters where there's clear differentiation between the learning that we've got. Lean is really all jumped together. You can combine it all together because uh, whatever you do, with a, a lean process improvement or a layout or inventory management or just in time, it, it makes changes all throughout the organization. One improvement will help make another improvement. Um, one change to your process will affect another area within your process. So this is, again, it's a fun chapter and it's all kind of um, combined together. So those are your learning objectives. And let's jump right in talking about the main definitions of just in time Toyota production system and lean operations. So these are the three approaches to continuous process improvement that leads to world-class operations. Just in time or JIT is continuous and forced problem solving via a focus on throughput and reducing inventory. It's really um, making, you're lowering your inventory and by lowering your inventory, you create problems. So we're gonna talk about that a lot uh, throughout the course of these next two lectures that when you reduce inventory, you're creating problems. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing, because then you need to look and see which problem am I going to address next to continually improve my processes. So that's the fundamental of, of, of when we're looking at lean, creating problems and then going and fixing them. The Toyota production system or TPS is a focus on continuous improvement, respect for people, and standard work practices. And we do that as kind of a pokey yoke so people do not have the ability to make state mistakes. That standard work helps people to, no matter how they are different, be from one person to the next person to the next person, the output of their product remains the same because you've created standard work so that they will all manufacture the same product or produce the same kind of service experience. Lean operations eliminates waste through continuous improvement and focus on exactly what the customer wants. So with JIT, TPS, and lean operations in every single one of these definitions, you heard continuous improvement. So that's the, 
That's the moral of the story when it comes to lean operations. We are continuously working on improving operations, looking at processes, looking at errors, um, looking at the quality of our product and seeing how we can eliminate that variability, reduce the amount of problems that we have, improve our processes, and that's going to help input our outputs and our, and our throughput. So in practice, there's very little difference between these terms and they are often used interchangeably. In many of the other chapters, I say, don't get confused using these words interchangeably. With JIT, TPS, and lean, they are definitely used interchangeably. In fact, I can barely say lean without also saying lean Six Sigma because a lot of the things that you learn when you're going through that training is you're incorporating statistical process control and that Lean Six Sigma methodology to continually find ways to improve your operations. So therefore, when I say Lean, I even say Lean Six Sigma, and that's just my, my nature there. So um, we will use the term Lean to encompass all of the related approaches and techniques. And just like Six Sigma had two meanings, one was just the number of defects per million, which is 3.4, but Six Sigma was a culture. Okay, if you have a culture of Six Sigma, you're trying to continually improve your processes to reduce the amount of defects that you have, you're probably not gonna to get to a total of 3.4 defects per million, but it's the journey of reducing um, the amount of errors that you have and improving your quality. That's why you call it a Six Sigma program. Same thing with Lean. You just, you've got a Lean program where you're continually working to improve your operations. Okay, so there are three fundamental principles of Lean. That is to eliminate waste, reduce variability, and improve throughput. Okay, so uh, waste is essentially any activity that is not uh, perceived as valuable in the eyes of the customer. So that could be rework, scrap, costs. Those are all things that can be considered waste. Reducing variability, variability is a bad thing. Variable, variability leads to uh, quality errors. It leads to different outputs in your process and different outputs of your products. Uh, if you recall in one of the last lecture recordings, I had that bag of Skittles and I said, hey, you know, they're trying to get uh, 14 Skittles in every single one of these bags. Well, I opened up a couple bag of Skittles after the lecture. I probably should have done before the lecture, but I opened them after the lecture. And lo and behold, all these bags had exactly 14 Skittles. So they had reduced variability. They had perfected that process to get exactly how many Skittles they wanted in that bag. So they have a continuous process improvement program in place, I'm sure, to make sure that there's a lack of variability in those processes. So variability is a bad thing, and we want to deliver perfect products on time, every time. So that's one of the fundamental principles of Lean, to reduce variability. And then lastly, one of the main fundamental principles of Lean is to improve throughput. Throughput is the rate at which units move through a production process, okay? So uh, we're trying to get units uh, from start to finish out quicker, that's your flow time or your throughput time, so you're trying to improve throughput. Okay, one of the other fundamental principles of uh, Lean is essentially that elimination of waste, right? So we talked about the three main ones. Elimination of waste is one of them. And in that, we need to understand what is considered waste. So number one is elimination of waste. That's the first thing we want to do in Lean. But what does waste look like? How do we define waste? Well, waste in the Japanese term is muda. And um, you're going to hear a lot of terms today that I use um, that are Japanese terms. You're not going to necessarily need to know um, uh, all of them. But uh, Kanban, Kaizen, muda, Gimba, you're going to hear those from me throughout today's lecture. Um, they are good to know, especially if you are in an organization that focuses on lean and continuous process improvement, because you'll hear these words again. And you'll know, um, like, hopefully you know what a poco yoke is by now. And if you ever hear that in your workplace, hopefully you'll hear my voice. But between poco yoke, go to the gimba, muda is bad. You know, you're going to hear a lot of these Japanese terms when you talk about continuous process improvement because they really focused on improving uh, processes, implementing lean, uh, reducing variability, and improving throughput. So all these fundamental principles of lean, like we talked about in the chapter on quality, that the Japanese really took this whole measure of improving quality to the next level using some of those quality gurus, and they did so using a lot of lean principles. So the first principle of lean is eliminating waste. The categories of waste are overproduction, queues, transportation, inventory, motion, 
over-processing, and defective processes or products. Those are all your seven categories of waste within Lean. So overproduction is producing more than the customer orders or producing early. That one's pretty self-explanatory. If your customer only needs 90 and you build 100, you've overproduced, therefore that's waste. Queues are idle time, storage, or waiting. So anytime you're in a facility and your job is to work on something and you're sitting there idle, that is a non-value added activity. You are not working idle time or waiting time, which are you know, known as queues. That is non-value added, so that's a waste. Transportation is moving materials between plants or between work centers. Uh, you want to cut down the amount of transportation that you have, therefore eliminating waste. Inventory can be raw material, work in process, finished goods, or excess operating supplies. So we're going to talk a lot more about lean inventory in the next video, but you do not want to have excess inventory sitting around. That is one of the biggest categories of waste within lean. Motion is movement of equipment or people that do not add value. And this one can really get hidden. You don't notice how much people actually move. So within lean operations, you're going to literally watch people, see how they're moving their body, see where they're moving around the facility, see um, what they touch and where they touch it and when they touch it. Because if you can cut down on that non-value added activity of motion and moving around, then you're going to make that person or that process more productive. Overprocessing is work performed on products that add no value. Uh, a simple example of that would be if you are uh, painting a piece of equipment that you're going to sell to a customer and it needs two coats of paint. Uh, but, you know, someone decided that one time a customer complains and so now you always put three or four coats of paint on that product. Well, that's overprocessing. If two will do the job, don't do more than that. And then last but not least, um, one of the biggest wastes in lean and just in business in general is creating a defective product. Uh, we don't want returns, warranty claims, rework, or scrap. All of those are terrible. And if you can reduce those, you're going to reduce your costs. So those are the seven categories of waste within Lean. Um, one other thing about eliminating waste is um, other categories that aren't noted. So they're not the major categories, um, but storage space, you can reduce that. Packaging, you can definitely reduce that. Um, whenever we get deliveries from Target, I get an enormous box for a tiny little product that's inside. So they've wasted all of that space and all the packaging that's inside. I feel like writing them, but I don't have the time. Uh, but that's a major waste, not only for their costs, but also for the environment. Uh, and then also another waste is product features. Um, sometimes companies get in the habit of trying to make their products so fancy and have so many bells and whistles that they don't realize what is the um, intended use for that product and what does the customer really want. So adding products, uh, features to a product that your customer doesn't want is a waste. So you need to learn to hear the voice of the customer and eliminate those added features. Okay, so here is an example of um, a lean improvement. Uh, so when we talked about the wastes, well, motion and transportation is one of the big ones. So in one of the Kaizen events, and we'll talk about what Kaizen events are later, uh, that I was at, we had employees who on the production floor were uh, constantly walking around and they were grabbing the inventory that they needed from the inventory location that was close to their work center. And then they were walking back and then they were working on their product and then they would get up and they would walk over to the inventory location and they would do that. And as you can see, they did it all day long. What you're looking at is called a spaghetti diagram. Okay, and it's a visual flow of activities or a process to identify what people are doing and then you can make those changes. Well, for this specific Kaizen event, we were looking at where all the people were walking. We did the spaghetti diagram, and you can see that employees were walking about one mile per day, and their job wasn't to walk around. Their job was to sit in a chair and build product. So um, this was the first step in that continuous process improvement project. We needed to first see the current state, and we did a spaghetti diagram uh, to see where they were moving all day. So we, we drew our fa factory out, we watched their movement, we wrote it down, and this is a spaghetti diagram. Then we relayed out that facility to where now we had the inventory in what's called a point of use location. So those employees barely had to stand up and only walk a couple feet away to get the inventory that they needed. And then they were only walking 375 feet per day um, when they were working. You know, so everyone's looking, 
I've heard people give me feedback before. Well, hey, the, they were, the employees were walking a mile a day. Now they're walking 375 feet away. Don't you want them to get their steps in? And it's like, my job is not to worry about their steps. My job is to make them productive. So they can take, the, they can get their steps on their breaks <laughs> or after work, right? You want them to be, you want to, you want them to be doing what you're paying them for. And in this case, these individuals, their job was to manufacture products. So we found ways to get the inventory and the tools that they needed closer to them so that they could focus on that. So one of the lean uh, wastes is motion and transportation. And after doing the Kaizen event, looking at the spaghetti diagram, we were able to relay out the facility. So they were walking uh, far less uh, per day, which is a non-value added activity. Okay, here is an example of removing cues. I love this one uh, because I'm impatient and nothing makes me more annoyed when I am uh, fly from San Diego to anywhere on a business trip and then I have to stand in the lines to either get a rental car or to check into a hotel or to get food. So this was um, on a trip that I took to um, Marriott Orlando downtown and I did mobile key. So I just walk straight into the hotel and I go straight to my room. I didn't have to talk to anyone at the um, check-in counter downstairs. There was people standing in line, checking in, trying to see which room they were going to get. I did it all through my app. So this is an example of removing a queue, which is a non-value added activity for me, the customer that is waste. And honestly, for Marriott too, it's waste for them too. The check-in process, they already have my credit card. They already have my preferences. If they don't have to see me, that's a win because maybe now they don't need five people at the check-in counter, maybe they only need four. So that's a process improvement that reduces queues and reduces costs. It's a win-win because it eliminates that bottleneck at the check-in counter. So a very simple example of removing queues. Okay, so elimination of waste. Um, this is what's called the 5S principles. Uh, this is Absolutely something that you can use anywhere, whether you sit at a cubicle, whether you're working on a manufacturing floor, um, you can even do this at your home as well. So the five S principles are used to create and clean a well-organized work environment. The five S principles are as follows. You sort, straighten, shine, standardize, and then sustain. So those are the five S's. I'm not going to attempt to say the five words in Japanese. When I teach this class in person, I usually have someone who can pronounce them do so, so that I don't sound like an idiot, uh, but I'm not going to try today. But the five S's that you will need to know are sort, straighten, shine, standardize, and sustain. Now, um, in America, many times we will also throw in safety and support or maintenance. So not uh, you know, we couldn't just have five S's, we need to have seven. Safety is a good one, and I see that a lot um, because building good safety practices into our 5S program and the, and the organization that we do in workspaces is definitely very valuable. So I understand uh, the need for safety. Um, but these 5S principles with sort, all you really want is that each item is in its proper location. So a simple example uh, for this one is that um, my keys go in the same exact spot every single time I get home. Okay, there's a little uh, cup, I put the keys in it, and they are, it, it's in its proper place every single time. I never have to search for my keys. My lovely wife, she will have them in her pocket, she will have them in her purse, she will have them in a backpack, she'll have them in the car, doesn't matter. But every time she goes to look for the keys, she can't find them because they're not in their proper place. So sorting is just making sure that everything has its proper place. Straightening is arranging materials so that they're easy to find and use. I'll go over some uh, tools for that. Uh, in just a second here, but you want to make sure everything's easy to find uh, because when you're going to manufacture something, if you can't find your tools or your inventory, it's going to take you longer to build the same exact product. And that is a waste if you can't find what you're looking for. Shine is cleaning your work area. That is just helpful for productivity, making sure that there's not pieces of debris or trash uh, in a workspace. I worked in a manufacturing environment where uh, we couldn't have a lot of static electricity or dust that would literally blow up the power supplies that we were working on. It would blow fuses, circuit breakers, things like that. So we had to clean every single day and we did so every day. The employees, before they got off work, 15 minutes before a different bell went off and that meant stop working, start cleaning. So that's shine. Next is standardized. This is formalizing procedures and practices. Um, this just means that employees are doing the same thing. 
Uh, they are not ab-libbing as they go. You want them to follow uh, standardized templates, procedures, practices, so that they all output the same thing. And then sustain is to make sure that you keep that going and don't let things fall backwards. So those are the five S's. You will hear that used a lot uh, in lean programs that we are going to 5S this area. And what they mean is they're going to go do sort, straighten, shine, standardize, and sustain. Now I'm going to show a couple pictures of what uh, 5S looks like. Um, just uh, some of these pictures I found uh, off the internet. Uh, so for instance, this one, you can see it's just a cabinet of different supplies. They've got materials. So if I'm an employee and these are the, the products that I use in my manufacturing facility, I'm walking in and I'm trying to find a cleaner or uh, some kind of sponge to use or, or you know, uh, gauze, whatever it may be. You can see it a lot easier on the right hand side. But if I have to hunt every time for what it is that I need to build my product, that's a non-value added activity. So after you go through the 5S process, you can see everything is over here on the right hand side now. They've got it clearly labeled where it goes and they're using smaller inventory sizes because they must have realized a lot of this was non-value added inventory and it was easier to see and store in this manner. So this is the before and that's the after. This is a very simple but good example of what a cabinet could look like, a cabinet holding inventory could look like after a 5S. There's two very, very useful tools when doing a 5S program. These are some uh, various visual controls that are out there. On the top is what's called a shadow box, and at the bottom is called a shadow board. Uh, so you can see the reason they're called a shadow board or box is that when the item is removed, its shadow is there. Or on the shadow board, there's the cutout of exactly what needs to go in that spot. So if you look on the left, look at this. If, if you're the individual that reaches into this cabinet every single time for the various drill bits, okay, not only are you fumbling around trying to get to the one that you need, um, which takes a little bit of excess time, but it's also a little bit dangerous. So that's the safety piece of 5S. There's, there's dr drills and there's there could be screws, there could be lots of things in that drawer that you don't necessarily want when you go down and reach into that drawer. So a shadow box makes it very easy. You know exactly where to find uh, the product that you're using or the tool that you're using because it goes into the same exact spot every single time. And this is just a cutout piece of foam. That's all it is. It's very easy to use. A shadow board um, just says exactly where you're your pliers go and your screwdrivers and whatever other tools that you use in that facility so that when you take something out, you know exactly where it goes back. And again, this some of you are looking at this, you know, rolling your eyes saying, this is lame. Why can't I just put the tools where I want? It's all about seconds. You're saving seconds every single time you go to manufacture something because everything has a home. And when you're done with it, you put it back in that home and there's no wasted time looking for the things that you need. Some of you are looking at this thinking it's, it's overkill, but it's not. It's extremely useful. It also helps you know if something is missing, um, if someone stole it or whatnot. So this is a good example of a shadow board, and this is a shadow box. Um, and it's, it's another form of a poker yoke, right? Making uh, designs that are easy to see visually. It's hard to make these mistakes because you know exactly where something goes. It's hard to put something back in the wrong spot because many times it literally won't fit. So that's a poke yoke. When you are making a mistake-proof process or inventory location, you cannot put this screwdriver or this, this drill in the wrong spot. It has a spot specifically for it, so it goes there every single time. Okay, another visual type of uh, control or 5S tool um, is uh, electronic scorecards, uh, lights uh, that are on production floors that tell you if the machine is running like it's supposed to or not. Uh, and then uh, putting tape on the manufacturing floor where tools and equipment are supposed to go. Um, so these are all more examples of visual controls that you can put into place. Um, this is so that all the employees can see where things go in plain sight quickly and easily um, so you know how things are performing. So I like the example on the far left. I wish that when I teach this class in person that there was a clock like that. Because when I'm sitting in front of hundreds of students and I'm giving a lecture, I have to think, okay, a big hand on five, uh, small hand on four, what time is it now? I just lost my train of thought. How many minutes do I have left in the class? 
if you look on the far left, it says, okay, you're doing okay on, in regards to your time. Maybe you need to start speeding up print. And okay, you've only got a few minutes left in the class, so hurry it up and get finished. So something as simple as a green, yellow, red on a clock is a visual control. People know exactly where they are and how much time they have left in the process. I see these on most manufacturing facilities. Whenever you see the red, it means that machine has stopped working and someone in quality control will go address the problem and make sure that it can get up and running as soon as possible. So those are some various visual controls. Uh, here is another one. This is just another example of a workstation where there's a shadow board and a shadow box, what a workstation looks like before, what it looks like after. And then here is one more example of a uh, die shop of what looked like before the 5S exercise and what it looked like after the 5X, 5S exercise. You can see that it is a lot cleaner, things are easier to find, and that employee is going to be able to uh, more efficiently work in their workstation because everything is uh, in its home and available for them when they need it. Um, last thing I'll say on 5S, uh, you can do this for your personal spaces too. Um, uh, here's my little friend uh, Marie Kondo, right? She's helping uh, organize houses all over the place, um, whether it's closets or garages or whatever else, uh, but you can absolutely do this for your home spaces as well. You can see I took uh, two pictures of garages here, kind of the before and then the after. Um, everything has its place, put everything in its place, and you'll be uh, far more efficient at home too. So um, I, I am always at a shortage of time these days. So the more efficient I can be, even where I keep things in inventory at my house, will help me to be more efficient and therefore I have less waste. Uh, and so you can 5S your personal spaces too. Okay, so that is... Um, eliminating waste. Waste is the first fundamental of, of lean that we want to focus on, eliminating waste. Now we're going to talk just for a second about reducing variability. That's the second fundamental of lean. Well, lean systems require managers to reduce variability caused by both internal and external factors. Variability is any deviation from the optimum process. Inventory helps to hide variability and less variability results in less waste. So um, an example of variability that I like to use is um, uh, in, in the hospital settings that I work in, there are different ways that you can run tests on these analyzers and you put quality control in there. Um, and sometimes they have to run tests over and over again to get uh, an accurate result. Well, there's various ways of ordering the tests from the vendor. You can either do it on a cost per box or a cost per result. I always encourage our customers to buy cost per result because that means all of the potential variability and waste, that risk is on the manufacturer, not on my client who's the hospital. If they are extremely inefficient, and they have to run tests over and over and over again to get a result, which for many kinds of tests they do, they might process it multiple times to finally get that, that end result that they want. I encourage them and I mathematically show them that if they were to move to a cost per, result, cost per reportable result type of model, then they only pay for the finished good and not all the waste in that process. If they are on a cost per box type of pricing method, then it's far more important that me and my team of Lean Six Sigma individuals work with that customer to reduce the variability and eliminate waste in their process so that they can reduce their costs. So that's one example that I like to give when in regards to reducing variability um, because it has a direct impact on the bottom line. You're not changing your products. You're using exactly what you were before. You're just being more efficient when you do so because all the variability in your process goes away. So the main sources of variability are poor production processes, like I was just talking about, um, with improper quantities, late or non-conforming units, unknown customer demands, and incomplete or inaccurate drawings, specifications, or bills of materials. So if, um, if the engineering design or drawing calls out for one kind of unit of measure, and the manufacturing facility then goes and builds in that unit of measure, but there's waste inherent in that drawing or specification, then there's going to be variability and waste in the output of that process. So reducing variability is one of the fundamental principles of lean. This is generally where you would get a lot of um, the Six Sigma folks involved to look at statistical process control. 
to tighten up your processes and reduce that variability and eliminate uh, some of the defects that you're seeing in your process. So reducing variability a lot of times is, is more mathematical than conceptual. Uh, and so that's where you kind of need some experts to help you with your variability. When looking for pictures online of reducing variability, I couldn't find any. I just found this bad joke that you can look at. Uh, essentially what this joke is saying is that there is, it's ironic uh, that there's various different um, methods for training and educational variability in Lean and Six Sigma training because it's all supposed to be about standardization and removing variability. So why is there variability in the training? Again, that's, that's, this is the slide that you get from me for today um, for reducing variability, that variability is a bad thing. Um, an example um, that, that just came to mind is I was, I was uh, on a call with one of our clients today, and one of my team members, one of my newer team members, um, put together an action item list with project completion dates and cost savings uh, projections, and it was a little sloppy. I wasn't very happy about it. Well, he wasn't using the standard template that I created for our team um, that says, here's the projects we're working on, here's the step that we are in in that process, here's the anticipated cost savings or value creation because of that process, here's the expected completion date, and here are the uh, key individuals I need assigned to this project. So we have created standard templates and processes because my team, we're a service, we're consultants, we're supply chain consultants. So I, my, as my team grows and our business grows, I don't want variability of my team's output from one customer to the next. So as the leader of the group, my job is to reduce that variability. And one of the ways that I can do that is by creating standard processes, standard templates, standard uh, ways that our team does analysis, and all of that to reduce the amount of variability that my team, a service firm, produces. Okay, and then the last fundamental principle of Lean is to improve throughput. Throughput is the time it takes to move an order from receipt to delivery. The manufacturing cycle time or the flow time is the time between the arrival of raw materials and the shipping of the finished order to the customer. So uh, throughput, again, just the time it takes to move an order from receipt to delivery, and you want to try and improve that as much as you can uh, so that you can have your products and your, uh, so your inventory and the people who are working on building that product, uh, the less time it takes them to build a product means they're going to be able to produce more products at the same exact rate, therefore improving their um, utilization and improving the productivity and improving throughput. So improving throughput um, in lean manufacturing settings are generally done through a pull system. That helps to reduce that manufacturing cycle time and by pulling materials in smaller lots, so this is where just-in-time comes in, by pulling material in smaller lots, inventory cushions are removed, therefore exposing problems, and that means you need to go work on the problems that it exposes. In contrast, a push system dumps orders on the downstream stations regardless of the need. Okay, so whenever you talk about lean manufacturing or lean process improvement, you want a pull system, not a push system. Here's an example real quick. A donut shop is a push system. Most donut shops start manufacturing their donuts, baking their donuts early in the morning, and they have hundreds of donuts sitting there when people are driving to work and they drive by and they pick up some donuts. They have baked those donuts and they have pushed them out to inventory. A pull system is the contrast of that, and that's a lot of sandwich shops, Jersey Mike's, Subway, places like that. When you walk into that facility, they have the raw materials right there at that point of use, but they do not make that finished good product until you walk through that door. So they are pulling that inventory and that order through the system, so they only make exactly what they need to support the customers they have on hand. So there's no finished goods inventory sitting around Subway Sandwich Shop. They only build exactly what they need. That is a lean process. That is a pull system. That is also called single piece flow. They're only making exactly what they need. So pull systems, um, I, I just touched upon this, but a, a push system produces finished goods inventory in advance of the customer demand using a forecast of sales and it goes downstream uh, to the next location in uh, that process. 
uh, in that whip process. They build in batches, they go to the next process, they build in batches, they go to the next process, and then you potentially have inventory all throughout your system because you've used a push system. In a pull system, employees at a given operation or work center go through the source of the required parts, such as machining or subassembly, and they withdraw the units as they need them. So they pull them throughout that system, generally one piece at a time. So you can see the difference between the finished good area for this setting. This individual's got boxes sitting behind him of work and process. This individual has boxes sitting behind him or her in this process. And you can see if you just count the boxes in this example up top in this push system, there's 12 pieces of inventory sitting in this process. With a pull system, there's one, two, three, four. They're each pulling one unit as a time, working on that unit as there's demand and there is less inventory in finished goods and work in process. That is a pull system. Okay, so um, here's an example of improving throughput. Um, please look at the link in optional videos under chapter 16. Um, I really like this link in particular. I was watching the movie The Founder a couple years ago. That's about um, McDonald's and how that um, fast food chain started out, all the bumps and bruises, and, and just it's a very interesting story about Ray Kroc. Um, but there's a scene in there that when I was watching it, I was like, holy cow, they're doing a spaghetti diagram. They're working to improve throughput, and they don't even know it. And they didn't. They didn't know it. Uh, they were just um, playing it by ear because they wanted to improve throughput, reduce the amount of motion uh, that their employees were doing. They were trying to uh, improve throughput so that because they wanted fast food, they wanted food to be delivered to the customer fast. They had to find ways to improve their processes to get that from order to delivery, that process made quicker. So they were playing around with different layouts with, with the inside of their facilities to see what would help to improve throughput. So if you get a chance, watch that video. I think it's really clever and uh, it's a good example of uh, ways to improve throughput and use a spaghetti diagram to do so. Although they didn't, they didn't do a spaghetti diagram, um, on purpose. They were just watching how the people were moving and then they made improvements as they went. Okay, now let's talk about Lean and the Toyota production system. So we've talked about Lean operations, uh, eliminating waste, eliminating variability, and now we're going to talk about the Lean and the Toyota production system. It's all about continuous process improvement, respect for people, and creating standard work practices. So the first piece of this is continuous improvement. That's the process improvement. It's an integral part of every employee's job. So uh, that, that plays right into number two of respect for people. They worked with their people. They empowered them. They gave them as much, much knowledge as they could, and they listened to them on how they could do continuous process improvements. They also created processes and standard work practices to help employees not make mistakes. So back to the poke yoke uh, uh, phrase again, we want to make sure that our employees don't have the opportunities to make mistakes. And if they, if they do, then we listen to what they suggest on how we can improve the quality or that process or even the throughput time for whatever that it is that they're working on. So TPS focuses on continuous improvement, respect for people, and processes and standard work, uh, trying to make uh, and look at rigorous process analysis um, all throughout the organization to improve uh, the quality there. So um, with continuous improvement, uh, you've heard me use this phrase already of Kaizen. So Kaizen is a Japanese term for a focus on continuous improvement. And a Kaizen event is members of a work cell or a team within an organization meet and develop improvements in the process. So Kaizen events are very common in organizations that, that focus on lean and continuous process improvement. A Kaizen event is um, a very good method for getting people together and determining what it is uh, that we need to improve within a process. The, the very first step in a Kaizen event in your, um, is to get the team together, talk about the process that you want to improve, uh, look at the uh, all the steps within that process. So you can see on uh, the bottom left of the screen and on the bottom right that both of these examples, when you see Kaizen events, you're going to see post-it notes all, all over a wall because people are writing out on a post-it note. They're making a flow chart. 
of all the different steps in that process step by step on a post-it note. And the before of that event is here's our process. The after is what you'll see many times is half of those post-it notes are gone. They have literally taken steps out of the process because they believe that they're on value adding. So I think Kaizen events are great. What you'll find many times when you go through a process is there are lots of steps that are non value added. A, a simple example of a Kaizen event that was held at my organization was with a, uh, accounting. There was um, one file that the accountants were validating every single time and they never found errors ever because it matched up with some other file that they got, some other report. They completely eliminated that one file they were validating and they saved a, like six to seven hours per week of every employee in our finance department. Through that Kaizen event, they also realized that every single one of us in the organization submits an expense report every month for our cell phone. And they cap us at $100 anyway. So instead of having to approve all of us employees having to create an expense report for our cell phone, and then someone in accounting having to approve it every single month, they just gave us all a $100 raise per month and said, here's your cell phone um, <laughs> reimbursement. We just gave everybody a $100 raise, congratulations. And they cut out hundreds of hours per year of us just filling out a form so we can get reimbursed for our cell phones. So a Kaizen event helped us to determine what steps we were doing in various processes that were non-value added, and a Kaizen event is a great uh, tool for that. Okay, so when we talk about uh, continuous process improvement and uh, going to the source of where errors can be found, um, when you go to the manufacturing floor, or, a, um, or, or out to the, the service um, and, and watch your people work on the services that they're performing. If you respect those people and listen to them, they generally will have advice for you on how a process or a product can be removed. There's two lean tools that you can use to actively engage with your employees and to go to the, the place where the uh, products are manufactured. So you might hear the word Gimba or Gimba Walk. Gimba is defined as going to where the work is actually performed. So a daily Gimba walk is you go to the different work cells and you talk through the different problems that they're seeing, ask them for advice, see how the previous day went, uh, whether they met their quality and service and output performance metrics. And that is a Gimba walk, going to where the work is actually performed and talking to the employees and looking at various metrics. One of the tools for doing that is called a QDIP board. QDIP stands for Quality, Delivery, Inventory, and Productivity. Sometimes, like as in this example, you'll see a, um, a little cross on there, and that is for safety. Uh, and so if you look closely at this picture, you can see there's green, blue, and red. So in this example, for safety, most of the time they had a safe workday. But in two instances, they had some safety concerns, so they filled those in in red. So they're doing their Gimba walk, and they have their QDIP boards at the locations, and they're talking through the various different metrics. How was our quality for yesterday? How did we do in regards to delivery? Um, what do we have in regards to inventory? Do you have everything you need to build the products that you need? Um, in my manufacturing days, we started doing this um, having a daily Gimba walk and there was QDIP boards at every location. And I was recently promoted to be materials manager. And this eye for inventory was pretty much red every single day. We had hundreds of shortages. Thankfully, by the time that I left, I had improved things enough to where there was a lot more green than there was red, but there was still shortages we had to work through. So this was some, so when I would go to that location, they would say, Brent, the shortage report should show that I'm missing part one, two, three, X five, and we can't manufacture this product because I have this shortage. Thankfully, my reports would generally always tell me that, but if not, the person on the floor would say, here's what we need and here's why we're stopped. So that's a QDIP board in conjunction with a Gimba walk. Okay, so we've just talked about uh, a lot of different lean tools that are out there. Uh, we're gonna go over even more in the next uh, video uh, when we talk about lean layouts and, and lean inventory, um, but lean is really just continually focusing on continuous process improvement, improving throughput, and reducing variability. And in traditional businesses that don't focus on lean, you're gonna have more inventory, 
larger deliveries, larger lot sizes. Um, your vendors are just there to help you do the work. They're not really assets to the organization. And with a lean organization, you're going to have less inventory. You're going to have uh, more deliveries that are smaller. So that's going to keep your inventory low. Your lot sizes will be smaller. Your vendors are going to be treated like partners. And we'll go over some of the strategies for that next. And your employees are considered assets. So um, there are tons of benefits of incorporating a culture of lean uh, within uh, the settings that you work, mainly improved productivity, equipment utilization, higher quality, flexibility, uh, and you're going to have good vendor relationships within Lean because they're going to be viewed as partners as well. You're going to reduce your lead times, your inventory, your cost, your scrap and your rework, and your need for indirect labor as there's variability in your, in your outputs. So uh, Lean is uh, a wonderful tool to incorporate uh, in your business settings. Uh, there are lots of benefits, lots of good improvements uh, where you want them, and there's lots of reductions where you want them as well uh, within Lean. So I will say one last time, the fundamental principles of a lane are continuous process improvement, reducing variability, and improving through.